Hello and welcome to our next talk, how to build an affordable cockpit. Welcome, Nia. Hey, I'm Nia, and maybe you somehow end up at the point of wanting to build a home cockpit, like I did at the beginning of this year. Like, maybe it's for training for your flight license or um, for your recurrent checkups. Maybe you just don't want to click and search with your mouse on the screen anymore, or maybe it's for VR. You're in immersed in VR, but the controls are a bit uh, lacking. So you want to build a full home cockpit. The easiest option would be to just buy a fully assembled cockpit. And yes, you can do that. Problem is it costs a lot, like 80 grand. Sometimes this also includes um, an on-premise assembly, so you don't even have to build it up. You just click buy, and then they come by and assemble everything for you. Uh, Offers also in can include the visual system, the computers, the software, everything. So, um, yeah, but with 80 grand, you're almost at a um, real um, A320 pilot license. So, in this case, uh, I looked at the prices at Fee Import, which is a German um, site which offers this kind of um, hardware. They also offer it for build it yourself. It's still very expensive, like also over 30k. And, well, that's still a bit above my, my pay grade, so. How about um, stepping a, a bit down and buy individual panels? One of the most important things in an airliner is the MCDU, so the part where the pilot interfaces with the aircraft and the management computer programs, the routes, and so on. And, well, this is an example from homecockpits.fr. Um, in this case, you also need an MCDU motherboard, which also adds to the cost. You can see there, uh, they usually cost around 1,000 euro a piece when you buy them commercially. And you need two of them in an A320. If you target like a bigger airliner, you might need three of them. Um, so this is also still quite expensive. So how about we buy individual parts and build the panels ourselves? So this is an example from Hispa Panels, a Spanish um, manufacturer. They still cost a lot. Like um, for the prices of one panel, for just the cover plate I can buy here, I can build a functional panel with custom PCB, 3D printed front plate, and uh, sticker decals. And I, just out of curiosity, I summed it up. I knew it was expensive, but I didn't expect that. Just for the pedestal, so the part between the pilot and co-pilot, um, where in most airliners the thrust levers are on and other um, important um, controls like flaps and so on. Um, just the front panels, no electronics, nothing is working, costs you over 700 bucks here. So we're gonna go the DIY route. Currently, resources are hard to find. Like, they are often incomplete, they are in proprietary file formats, like you need Fusion, free, Fusion 360 if you wanna uh, adjust something to your needs, or um, if you go to some sites like ZG Traders or something where you can find STL models that get shared, and people want to have a decent amount of money just for the STL files. Um, while already working on my project, I found one person um, on Printables who started working um, on parts as well. Those look way more sophisticated than uh, what I am doing right now. But unfortunately, again, it's incomplete. Uh, the entire uh, electronic side of things is lacking. 
uh, and it's way less cost aware than what I am targeting. So is there really nothing I can use? Well, there's one thing that popped up about two years ago. A video on the YouTube channel of Riva, um, someone who does like uh, mostly flight simulation, who is an Airbus pilot in real life. He showed off this FCU, so the flight control unit where you uh, control the autopilot. Um, and it looked really promising and the idea was that this is open source, that you can build it on your own. The unfortunate part is it's developed behind closed doors. There is no repository yet that's public available. There is um, nothing I can use right now. It's just there should be eventually someone, something, but I don't know what or when, because the community behind this is also closed behind a proprietary chat platform. Uh, so yeah, I can just ask what the status is or if I can get involved. Um, the targeted cost for this DIY option would have been around 160 euros for building it. So I've been hoping for that to show up and being able to use that for a long time already, but it looks like I don't have to anymore. The Chinese manufacturer Wing Wing um, just offered a very compelling um, FCU. So it's the first affordable offering uh, from a manufacturer. Before that, if you were looking to buy a fully assembled unit like that, you would also look around 1,000 euros uh, for this panel. And now it's like 135 euro um, price, or if you get it on pre-order, it's even cheaper. So it's still on pre-order, so it's not spread in the wild and got wide re reviews, but the few reviews from YouTubers who have gotten their hands on this unit looked quite good. And so I was looking into buying it and it of officially only supports Windows, which is kind of unfortunate. But I uh, talked to their support and, well, it's a Chinese company and in my experience they always have um, very good support in mind and they talked to the developers in, in w just within a few minutes I got the answer that it's using the USB HID, so Human Interface Device Protocol. Um, so while it isn't officially supported, we probably most likely can make it work on the Linux and Mac OS. And WinWing also announced that more parts will be coming, but it's still limited to a very, very small section of the cockpit right now. So promising, but small availability. So with those in mind, I, at the beginning of this year, set out some goals which I wanted uh, to achieve. I wanted every sources, all instructions in one place. I don't want people to go out and search for stuff anymore. I want one place, have the STL files in one place, and I wanted it to be easy to be reproducible and to build it yourself. So the initial thought was like, you need soldering skills in a 3D printer and you order the PCBs and um, throw the files on the 3D printer, wait a few weeks till the PCBs are delivered and you assemble them and the printer is done printing and you get yourself a cockpit. It's not that easy, but uh, that's still like the goal. And you can still, if you don't feel comfor comfortable soldering those parts, you can still order it assembled. It costs a bit more. Um, yeah, then I wanted everything to be open source, so I can't use any external um, sources. If I find knobs somewhere, it's hard to include them. The project on printables I mentioned before, I can't just include those, even though they look rather good. <laughs> um, cost licensing, and well, I wanted it to be budget focused. I set myself a 
budget limit of 1,000 euro for the pedestal. And um, right now I'm only really focusing on the pedestal cost. That's the most important thing. And well, I also don't want to get sidetracked too much because yeah, it's how I mismanage my time the most by planning too far ahead. Right now my finances look roughly good. I'm probably coming ar out around 1,000 euros um, for the pedestal and the rest. I don't know yet, but the overhead panel, which I would focus on next, I would estimate that this will also be around 1,000 euros or even less, depending on how things go. So I started developing this and the first thing I did was like learn PCB design because I had no experience with that. And while designing my first PCB and with the uh, objective in mind, I was thinking about problems which come up when I built such a panel. Cockpits are backlit in the night. So at, in the dark you don't want a bright light because you can't properly see outside, but you still want to read all the labeling. So when designing the PCB, I started um, spreading LEDs over my panel. Um, I didn't know about how I was, oh, how I would construct that panel yet, but well, those LEDs on the PCB made things complicated. This is one of my PCBs and like 50% of those traces and so on or even more and all those components are just the LEDs for the backlighting. So it made PCB design more complicated and yeah, the placement of these LEDs was also a challenge because I had to figure out where text is to place LEDs there to properly backlight them. So my first PCBs were like this, but then I started thinking about how the markings for the front panel uh, will be. A friend of mine suggested using dual filament prints, and for a while I followed that, blissfully ignoring that, well, 3D printers are accessible right now, and that was one of the um, reasons why 3D printing was the was something I wanted to include or use in contrast to more um, involved and not ac so accessible um, techniques like machining uh, with CNC mills or something like. I know a, at least a dozen of people who have a 3D printer. I don't know many who have a CNC mill. And well, I was blissfully ignoring that while 3D printers are accessible, 3D printers with multi-filament or dual heads are not so accessible. And well, I then encountered the first multi-filament prints. And as you can see, it doesn't look that well. Um, and this Fawson size is about 1.5 centimeters tall which is bigger than the markings on my panel. I also saw it in the other orientation of printing, so um, it didn't make a big difference there. So for now, I'm going to use stickers. Uh, just white printed stickers on, uh, with uh, transparent around them for the markings, which I'm going to just stick on the 3D printed panels. I would love to show you um, a panel, how it looks, but unfortunately the stickers didn't arrive despite paying extra for an express production in order. Um, an alternative, which I haven't explored yet, but want to in the future, is using a grill glass and laser to cut it and engrave it. The downside of it First, again, the accessibility of a laser is way less than a 3D printer. And also, 
while I could print the entire pedestal for five bucks maybe in filament cost, this would run me 70 to 100 bucks for uh, the glass and the paint I need. Um, and well, that is a question, does it fit into the budget? Um, and also, this w on the one hand, it would allow me to do backlighting again, but the cost, how much the backlighting would then cost me extra is also unclear, because I haven't experimented with ways to do that yet. So, this is also the way the panels we've seen earlier from HISPA panels are made. Uh, which you can buy, so it's very similar process to those commercial panels, which give rather um, good results. Another problem I ran into was on the MCDU I have showed earlier, you have a display, but it's a very rectangular display format, and you have on all four sides around the panel more components like buttons and indicators with LEDs. And I just couldn't find a panel, uh, an LCD panel display, which would fit within those parameters. Uh, so I had to cut out a piece in the PCB and put the uh, display behind uh, a PCB to make that work. Which also has the benefit that if someone recreates this build and can't find the exact panel I'm using, they have way more flexibility in size, depending on what display options are available to them. And another issue I haven't figured out yet is on the audio control panel. Those knobs, you can pull them out and turn on the uh, audio channel this knob is responsible for. You pu push them in, it's muted. You turn the knob to change the volume, and at the same time, if the knob is pulled out, it's also illuminated. And, well, first of all, we have a quite tight spacing, as you see, so it's hard to fit um, big components on a PCB. And I eventually found something that might fit, which also would incorporate the push-pull functionality and potentiometer for the volume all in one. But unfortunately, this part is long end of life. It's used in an old car radio and very hard to find, like a couple dozen at most on some sites which specialize on end of life parts. I was also considering doing a bit of a different variant of the radio and audio control panels, which is new and an option on a uh, new A320. But it has the same problem with the audio knobs, because they're technically the same in this way. And I just haven't found a good way to do this or a feasible compromise to get this um, working. So, where's the project now? I would love to show you um, the current state, but unfortunately the things I have ordered only arrived yesterday and despite um, soldering all evening, I didn't manage to finish the PCBs and put everything together. But most of the PCBs of the pedals are designed now, and I'm assembling them right now. Some have some hardware bugs I need to fix and respawn them and get them in a proper shape. The 3D models for the mo more simple panels are done, and the firmware, well, it's written while I waited for the PCBs to arrive but I didn't have the time yet to fully boot up the um, system and put it together and see if it properly runs, so there might be also some work ahead. So what's next? I gotta figure out the mechanical 
mechanically involved part. So the thrust levers and the trim wheels are especially intricate as they have um, parts which move together but at different uh, ratios. So the trim wheel and the trim indicator move at a different uh, angular rate than uh, to each other. Um, it's also connected to a motor so the aircraft in normal operation uh, trims for you and that turns the trim wheel in turn and I'm not that well versed with CAD and I still have to learn or get help with that. And in all this uh, assembly with the trim wheels also the thrust levers are involved. So that's a big mechanical part that's still ahead of me. I gotta design a box for the pedestal because right now I have, I'm starting to have all the panels and they look all nicely but it's still all flying around and I need to design a um, pedestal box where everything fits on and also I want it to be somewhat transportable so I want a kind of lightweight but sturdy material so I've gotta do some research into that direction. I got to write a bunch more um, documentation so other people can follow my work and recreate um, what I've done. And then the next step would be start with the overhead panel. This one I see more as a relaxed thing as most things I've already made. I designed panels with most features existing on the overhead panel. So it's just a matter of sitting down with some con um, concentration, taking time and fun in creating panel by panel and finishing that part. So that's it for me. Thanks for listening and I would be ready for some questions if you have any. Are there any questions? Ah. Yes, yeah, so uh, building the hardware is really cool and um, I'm looking forward to seeing the final result. My question is about um, if the idea is only using open source parts, open source software, is there a good open source flight sim software which then will um, like run the simulation? Yes, there's Flight Gear. Um, it's an open source flight simulator developed by a community around the world. Um, and it has a quite decent A320 model in it as well. People are starting to work on an A330, which is quite similar to um, the A320. So, hardware compatibility is also there in parts and if you're more interested I recommend my talk about flight gear at Easter Hack. Thanks. The next one. Yep. Hi, you might have mentioned a few of those details uh, already in the talk, but could you sum up what software stack is surrounding all of this? So what programming languages are being used for the firmware and what did you use to make the PCBs and 3D yes. models, etc.? So um, for the PCBs, I'm using KiCad. Um, for 3D models, I mostly use um, Dune 3D, which is a, a rather new um, uh, CAD um, software, but I probably need something different because more complex stuff like cogwheels and so on are not supported yet in Dune 3D. And for the firmware, I'm using Rust, uh, writing it in Rust and using as well the human, uh, human interface device um, protocol of USB to interface that with the computer and then it's basically very generic drivers um, so every system should just out of the box um, work with it and then it's just a matter of writing a suiting mapping from uh, the HID inputs and outputs to the simulator so that will of course depend on 
what simulator you use and uh, how yeah, you have to do that. Uh, depends on the simulator you use. More questions? No one? Okay. Thanks, Nia, for the talk.